Legislative history has different meanings and utility in a legal research plan depending on your perspective. Let's start with defining that term, legislative history. Legislative history refers both to the research task of assembling the documents produced during the legislative process, as well as the collection of documents themselves. This can be expressed in several ways, as you see here, but think of the term as one that is all-encompassing of this process. There is one term here that should jump out at you and requires further discussion, and that's legislative intent. Legislative intent is the ultimate purpose for researching legislative histories. By researching the documents produced during the legislative process, we seek to understand the intent of the legislature at the time the law was passed. We want to know what they knew and what they thought at the time the law was making its way through the legislative process. A very important caveat here is that we seek to understand the intent of the legislative body as a whole, not each individual legislator. So while one senator's remarks in a floor debate may contribute to our understanding, they do not necessarily reflect the legislative intent in its entirety. What do we do with legislative history research? What is so helpful about understanding legislative intent? First, consider a common situation encountered in legal research. The language in the statute is clear or ambiguous. An analysis of the documents produced by the legislature at the time and an understanding of legislative intent may clarify the meaning of the statute. We might also use legislative history research when a statute is applied to a situation that is unforeseen at the time the legislation was passed. For example, a plaintiff or defendant might try to apply a law in a situation that isn't clearly laid out in the statute. A legislative history may tell you if that unique situation was ever contemplated in the drafting of the statute, or if it was included once in a draft and subsequently removed, which could imply that the situation was specifically not meant to be governed by the statute. Lastly, you may use legislative history to suggest a different interpretation, supported by legislative intent, but differing from that normally applied to the statute in question. Before you begin researching, we need a quick review of the legislative process. Documents are produced at each point in the legislative process. These documents give us a snapshot of what is happening in the legislative process at that time with regard to any particular piece of legislation. For the rest of this unit, we will talk about the purpose of these documents, why they are important to research, and how we find them. First, a bill is introduced into the House or the Senate. Anyone can write a bill, but it may only be introduced by a member of the legislature. There may be multiple drafts or versions of a single bill to consider in your research. Then a bill is sent to committee for discussion and possible hearings. Much legislation does not make it past this stage. A committee may hold hearings, which produces hearing transcripts. Testimony given at a committee may contain helpful and objective views of disinterested experts, but it may also contain partisan comments of the interest groups involved on both sides of an issue. This speaks to the level of persuasive authority attributed to hearing transcripts in the research process and emphasize the importance of evaluating remarks for their utility yourself. Committee prints are prepared by committee staff with the purpose of informing the committee on the issue at hand. This speaks to what the committee knew at the time and can be a helpful source of background information, history on a given issue, and especially relevant statistical information that's otherwise hard to research. Committee reports are the most important and most persuasive piece of legislative history. Committee reports articulate the rationale of the committee's recommendation, as well as containing the text of the bill. Committee reports may come from either the House or the Senate committees. After a bill leaves committee, it may be debated on the floor of the House or the Senate. If the bill passes, it's then sent to the next chamber and the whole process is repeated. These debates are recorded and published. If there is a conflict between the House version of a bill and the Senate version of a bill, then it's referred to a conference committee. The conference committee produces a report, much like the committee report, which supersedes the committee report as the most persuasive document in a legislative history. When legislation passes, it goes to the president, and whether the president signs the bill or vetoes the bill, this step is documented with a signing or a veto statement. When you're using legislative history in practice, remember that these documents precede the passage of a law. They are not the law itself, 
therefore they are secondary sources. Secondary sources are always persuasive authority. We will discuss in more detail later in this unit how each of these documents serves the purpose of understanding legislative intent with varying degrees of persuasiveness.